Recording Journal Entries and Posting to the General Ledger, Chapter 2, Wild, 6th Edition. We will walk through the chapter example to record journal entries, post the entries to the general ledger using T accounts, and then to the unadjusted trial balance. You may wish to pull out your accounting equation for Chapter 2 to follow along to make certain that you understand why we are debiting and crediting certain accounts when transactions occur. First of all, we have uh, the first transaction. We'll go through 16. The first transaction will be received an invest by, investment by the owner in exchange for common stock in the amount of $30,000. Since cash as an asset is increasing, we will debit it. Common stock as an owner's equity account is increasing, so therefore we will credit it. Next, we are going to purchase supplies benefiting future periods. So since it's going to benefit future periods, we are considering this to be an asset. If we were purchasing supplies just for the month, then we would consider it to be supplies expense. But since it's for future periods, which is the hallmark of an asset, we are going to consider this to be an asset supplies. And again, we are purchasing it for cash, so cash is going down. Supplies are an asset. To increase an asset, we debit it. Cash is an asset. And when we decrease an asset, we credit it. Next, we're going to purchase some equipment for cash in the amount of $26,000. Our equipment, an asset, is going up by $26,000, so we're going to debit it. Cash as an asset is decreasing, so we will credit it. If I'm going too fast, make sure you pause, look at everything on your accounting equation in relationship to what's on the screen to make certain that you're understanding everything. Next, let's look at some more purchases of supplies, but this time instead of spending cash, we're going to purchase them on credit. So we're going to increase the asset supplies. We're going to debit supplies for $7,100. And now we are increasing accounts payable. As a result of this transaction, we now have an accounts payable. Since it's increasing before the transaction, we didn't have it. Now we do have it. So accounts payable, when they increase, we credit them. So therefore, accounts payable will receive a credit of $7,100. Next, our business is open and we're providing consulting services, earning revenue for performing um, consulting services associated with our business. We were paid in cash, so cash is going up and asset we will debit it. Consulting revenue is under owners or stockholders equity. It is a credit when we increase consulting revenue. So when we earn revenue, we're going to credit consulting revenue to show it as an increase. Next, we're going to pay monthly rent, which is associated for the month, so it's just an expense. It's not related to future periods, so this will be a debit to rent expense. So we're going to debit that because as an expense, it is increasing, and we're going to credit cash as an asset. It's decreasing, therefore we will credit it. Next, we will debit salary expense because we're going to pay the bi-weekly salaries of $700. So we're going to debit salaries expense and credit cash since as an asset it's decreasing. Next, we're going to provide consulting services to a client in the amount of $1,600 and we're also going to rent a portion of our premises to the same client for $300. However, they're not going to pay us. They're going to give us a promise to pay, which means that we'll eventually will receive that money. So we have an accounts receivable. The accounts receivable is the total of the consulting revenue provided to the client as well as the rental revenue. It's in the amount of $1,900. Our consulting revenue is $1,600 and our rental revenue is $300. Since revenue is increasing, we are going to credit it. Revenue as an account increases with the credit. Accounts receivable is an asset, so it is increasing with the debit.
Next, we're getting paid for those uh, that the services that we provided on account. So we're going to recognize the fact that cash and asset is going up for $1,900 and also that the asset accounts receivable is being reduced by $1,900 since they've paid off their balance. Next, we're going to make a partial payment on accounts payable. So accounts payable is going down. Accounts payable is a liability when it is decreased, it is debited. So we're going to debit accounts payable. And then cash as an asset is decreasing, so we are going to credit cash. Next, we're going to pay dividends in the amount of $200. Dividends under stockholders' equity increases with the debit. So prior to this, we didn't have any dividends. As a result of this transaction, we do have a dividend. So it is increasing, and we will debit it for $200. Cash as an asset is decreasing, so we're going to credit it in the amount of $200. Next, we receive a, from a client $3,000 associated with some future services that they want us to provide. So they're willing to give us a down payment of $3,000. Since we have not earned this revenue yet, we are going to title the, with the account is entitled unearned revenue and it is a liability. So if the client changed its mind the next day, we would have to pay them back $3,000. That's why it's considered a liability. So we'll increase cash debited. And since this is a liability and we're increasing a liability, we're going to credit it for $3,000. Next, we're going to prepay some insurance in the amount of $2,400 for a 24-month insurance. So since this benefits future payments, it's going to be considered an asset, a future benefits, I'm future period, sorry. And so it's going to be considered an asset. So our asset is prepaid insurance in the amount of $2,400. Increase of an asset, so it'll be debited. Cash is decreasing, so we'll credit it. Next, we're going to purchase some more supplies, $120, so supplies as, a, as an asset will increase with the debit, cash as an asset will decrease with the credit. Next, we're going to pay our monthly utilities, utility expense will go up by $230, so expenses, when they increase, they're debited, cash as an asset is decreasing, so we're going to credit it. And then we're going to pay our employees salary expense in the amount of $700. So as an expense, it's going to be debited when it's increased. Cash is going to be credited when it decreases. Next, let's look at these journal entries and see how they interact with the T accounts in the general ledger. So here we have the first journal entry, cash increased, debited for 30000 common stock increased and credited for 30000 Debit here, credit here, and then we'll number these as we go through so you can always trace back to where the entry came from in case you've gotten something wrong. The hardest part of doing this is preparing the journal entries and making certain that you have them done properly. The rest of this is just being meticulous and careful and transferring the information over. Next, supplies, uh, purchase of them. So we debited supplies and cash is going down, so we credit cash. So cash is being credited, office supplies are being debited. Next, we purchase the equipment for cash. Equipment is going up, being debited, and cash is going down 26000 and it's being credited. We can see the balance in the cash account is $1,500, so in the next purchase they make, they'll probably have to do on credit since cash is running low, and certainly enough, they have to purchase supplies in order to um, perform their business activities. So supplies were purchased as an asset, $7,100. But since we were low on cash, we charged it, and it's on accounts payable. So accounts payable went up, increased. We were going to credit, well, therefore we'll credit it for $7,100. Next, we finally earned some money. We've opened our business and we've earned some money. So we've been spending a lot of money to get our business set up. Now we're finally earning some money as a result of being in business. So we received cash from our clients for consulting revenue. Cash went up, debited $4,200. Consulting revenue went up $4,200.
Next, we had to pay our rent, rent expense $1,000, cash $1,000. Rent expense will be debited, we're increasing in expense, and cash will be credited, we're decreasing cash. Next, salary expense, we're paying our employees in cash, so cash will be decreased and credited, and salary expense as an as a expense will be debited to show the increase. Next, we have the accounts receivable where we didn't get paid by the uh, customer that we did the consulting for, and we also rented. So we received a promise to pay. We're going to acknowledge the fact that we performed the services and we rented to them. So $1,600 in consulting revenue, $300 in rental revenue, accounts receivable, $1,900. But we can see that we haven't been paid yet, but we still recognize our revenue despite the fact that we have not yet been paid. Now we have been paid, so cash will go up, we'll debit it for 1900 and accounts receivable will go down. So it's easier to understand accounts receivable when we look at this T account replicating the general ledger. We can see that the client no longer owes us money, they paid us off. Next, accounts payable, we're going to pay a portion. So accounts payable, we're going to debit it since we're decreasing the amount we owe. We're also decreasing our cash, so cash is going down, being credited, and accounts payable are going down, being debited. Next, we're going to pay some dividends. Dividends are debit-based, so when they ex they didn't exist prior to this, now they do exist, so they're increasing, so we will debit dividends, paying it in cash, so we're going to credit cash since cash is decreasing. Next, we received cash from a client for services that we are going to perform for them in the future. So we are going to record the fact that we're going to debit cash. Cash has increased, but our liabilities have also decreased since we haven't performed the services yet. That's why it's entitled unearned revenue. So we will credit a liability to show that it's increased. Next, prepaid insurance as an asset, it's increasing debited, but since we paid it out with cash, we're going to decrease cash, another asset. Next, we purchased some supplies, so we're increasing an asset, debiting it, decreasing cash, so we're crediting it. Paying utilities expense, decreasing cash with the credit, increasing our expenses with the debit. Salary expense, we're increasing our expenses with the debit, and we're decreasing our cash with the credit. Next, let's look at how all of these T accounts will integrate with the unadjusted trial balance. These will be all of the debits. These will be all of the credits. Again, we're looking to see if all of the normal account balances are there. So we're looking to see if all of these account balances look normal. We know cash is an asset, so it should be a debit. Office supplies is an asset, so it should be a debit. We don't have anything in accounts receivable. Prepaid insurance is a debit, so that looks normal. Equipment is a debit because it's an asset account, so that looks normal. Accounts payable is a liability, so it should be a credit. And again, when we say that something's normal, it's whether the debits or credits increase the account. So accounts payable increase with the credit, so therefore a credit balance would be normal. Unearned revenue, credit balance looks normal. Common stock. Credit balance looks normal. And again, you may you want to pause here and look at your accounting equation to refer to what I'm speaking about. Dividends, debit balance, a debit is a normal balance for dividends. Consulting revenue, credit is a normal balance for consulting revenue. Rental revenue, normal balance credit. Expense, rent expense, normal balance debit. Salary expense, normal balance um, is an expense uh, is a debit and utilities expense normal balance is a debit additionally we're looking to see that all of our credits equal all of our debits and they do they equal both sides equal forty five thousand three hundred dollars